All right. Let's go ahead and talk about an opinion piece today. We have coming from Ars Technica, $3.6 billion Bitcoin seizure shows how hard it is to launder cryptocurrency. So if you guys aren't aware, there was a hack. There were this couple that basically got the hack and then they basically essentially got caught. And then this is an opinion piece by Ars Technica, I think originally by Wired.com that is talking about kind of like how this shows cryptocurrency is actually harder to launder money on, I suppose, than traditional fiat currencies, which is always fun. So on Tuesday, Ia Lichtenstein and Heather Morgan were arrested in New York. I knew Heather Morgan because she's the one that's getting all memed up. I actually didn't really know the, I don't know how to pronounce this. I haven't heard it in a video yet. So hopefully I got pretty close. Uh, were arrested in New York and accused of laundering a record 4.5 billion worth of stolen cryptocurrency. In the 24 hours immediately afterwards, the cybersecurity world ruthlessly mocked their operational security screw-ups. Lichtenstein allegedly stored many of the private keys controlling those funds in a cloud storage wallet that made them easy to seize. And Morgan flaunted her self-made wealth in a series of cringe inducing rap videos on YouTube and Forbes columns. That's pretty epic though. I mean, the, those videos were pretty epic. All right. I a hundred percent approve of this type of behavior, <laughs> but those gaps have obscured the remarkable number of multi-layered technical measures that prosecutors say the couple did use to try to dead end the trail for anyone following their money. Even more remarkable, perhaps, is that federal agents led by IRS criminal investigations managed to defeat those alleged attempts at financial anonymity on the way to recouping $3.6 billion of stolen cryptocurrency. In doing so, they demonstrated just how advanced cryptocurrency tracing has become, potentially even for coins once believed to be practically untraceable. Uh, what? Okay, that's interesting. Let's get into this more than... What was amazing about this case is the laundry list of obf obfuscation techniques Lichtenstein and Morgan allegedly used, says Ari Redboard, the head of legal and government affairs for TRM Labs, a cryptocurrency tracing and forensics firm. Redboard points to the couple's alleged use of chain hopping, transferring funds from one cryptocurrency to another to make them more difficult to follow, including exchanging bitcoins for privacy coins like Monero and Dash, both designed to foil blockchain analysis. Court documents say the couple also allegedly moved their money through the Alpha Bay dark web market the biggest of its kind at the time, in attempts to sty time detectives. Stymie, sorry, excuse me. Yet investigators seem to have found paths through all of those obstacles. If they really were, I mean, obviously, like some of the concerns here is like, which I think we pretty much knew, is your privacy is gone. Your privacy has gone, your security has gone, like, Monero is not working for it. Dash is not working for it, right? And clearly, every time we get into this, it's like, well, crimes are be being committed. Therefore, we need to basically invade your privacy. And this just is a never-ending story of disappointment. But let's keep going. Yet, yeah, investigators seem to have found the path through all those obstacles we got through there. In a 20-page statement of facts published alongside the Justice Department's criminal complaint against Lichtenstein Stein, and Steen or Stein, who knows, and Morgan on Tuesday, IRS CI detailed the winding and tangled routes the couple allegedly took to launder a portion of the nearly 120,000 Bitcoin stolen from the cryptocurrency exchange BitPhoenix in 2016. Most of those coins were moved from BitPhoenix's addresses on the Bitcoin blockchain to a wallet the IRS labeled 1CGA4S, allegedly controlled by Liechtenstein. 
Federal investigators eventually found keys for that wallet in one of Liechtenstein's cloud storage accounts, along with logins for numerous cryptocurrency exchanges he had used. But to get to the point of identifying Liechtenstein along with his wife Morgan and locating that cloud account, IRSCI followed two branching paths taken by 25,000 Bitcoins that moved from the 1CGA4S wallet across Bitcoin's blockchain. One of the branches went into a collection of wallets hosted on AlphaBay's dark web market, designed to be impenetrable to law enforcement investigators. The other appears to have been converted into Monero, a cryptocurrency designed to obfuscate the trails of funds within its blockchain by mixing up the payments of multiple Monero users both real transactions and artificially generated ones and concealing their value. Yet somehow the IRS says it identified Liechtenstein and Morgan by tracing both those branches of funds to a collection of cryptocurrency exchange accounts in their names, as well as in the names of three companies they owned known as Demand Path, End Pass, uh, End Pass and Salesfolk. So, if this second branch is true going through Monero, it's clear that they can track Monero at this point, uh, which is kind of like the big deal, in my opinion, that I'm getting from this here. Um, Lichtenstein and Morgan appear to have in Tended to use Alphabay as a mixer or tumbler, a cryptocurrency service that takes in a user's coins and returns different ones to prevent blockchain tracing. Alphabay advertised in 26, April 2016 that it offered that feature to its users by default. Alphabay can now safely be used as, as a coin tumbler, read a post from one of its administrators. Making a deposit and then withdrawing after is now a way to tumble your coins and break the link to the source of your funds. In July 2017, however, six months after the IRS says Liechtenstein moved a portion of BitPhoenix coins into Alphabay wallets, the FBI, DEA, and Thai police arrested Alphabay's administrator and seized its server in a data center in Lithuania. That server seizure isn't mentioned in the IRS's statement of facts, but the data on that server likely would have allowed investigators to reconstruct the movement of funds through Alphabay's wallets and identify Liechtenstein's withdrawals to pick up their trail again, says Tom Robinson, a co-founder of the cryptocurrency tracing firm Elliptic. The data that investigators appear to have got from Alphabay is the key to all of this, says Robinson. According to the IRS, those Alphabay withdrawals were ultimately traced through numerous movements around the blockchain to a collection of cryptocurrency exchange accounts, some of which Liechtenstein and Morgan controlled. IRS investigators say that the other branch of funds from Liechtenstein's 1CGA4S wallet was laundered through... I, we should just call it the parent wallet, but that's fine. It was laundered through chain hopping, but then only partially describe how that obfuscation works, not to mention how the IRS defeated it. Of course, they aren't going to tell us how. One chart in the IRS's statement of facts shows a collection of Bitcoins moving from the parent wallet into two accounts on an unnamed cryptocurrency exchange. Yet those two accounts registered with Russian names and email addresses were funded entirely with Monero rather than Bitcoin, the IRS says. Both accounts were eventually frozen after the exchange demanded more identifying information from the account holders and they failed to provide it. That's uh, KYC. Well, by the time, by, by that time, much of the Monero had been converted into Bitcoin and withdrawn. The IRS explanation doesn't mention at what point the money in Liechtenstein's Bitcoin wallet was converted into the Monero that later appeared in those two exchanges, nor, more importantly, does it say how investigators continued to follow the cryptocurrency despite Monero's features designed to thwart that tracing, a feat of crypto tracing that has never been before documented in a criminal case. Yeah, and that's the, I mean, if they, ugh, so the, here, the problem is, is if they, like, if they do know how to do this at this point, they're not going to tell anybody. They don't want anybody to know. 
But if if they're drawing a correlation between, you know, where it hopped to and then where it ended up as Monero, and they're confident in the fact that they trace the, the proper account, then it does to me seem like Monero has been cracked as far as this cookie goes for security and privacy. Uh, and that's concerning from a cryptocurrency perspective. It is possible that the IRS investigators didn't actually trace Monero to draw that link, points out Matt Green, a cryptographer at Johns Hopkins University and one of the co-creators of the privacy-focused cryptocurrency Zcash. They may have found other evidence of the connection in one of the defendant's records, just as they found other incriminating files in Liechtenstein's cloud storage. Now, that is a good point. I should have... I Okay. So what could have happened is that cloud account, I guess, could have had maybe login or keys or something for the exchange that that Monero sat on, and that's how they drew the correlation between the two. I mean, I guess that's pretty obvious. At this point, that that could be it. So, or they could simply be making an assumption uh, unsupported by evidence, though that's not a common practice for federal agencies prosecuting a high-profile criminal case years in the making. The third possibility, which I would definitely not rule out, is that they have some tracing capabilities that they're not disclosing in this complaint, says Green. And that's the part I'm worried about. And I think that they may have that at some point, right? The cryptocurrency tracing firm Chain Analysis, which counts the IRS as a customer, has privately touted its own secret methods to trace Monero. Last year, hackers leaked a presentation to Italian police in which Chain Analysis claimed it could provide a usable lead in 65% of Monero tracing cases. In another 20% of cases, it could determine a transaction sender, but not its recipient. In many cases, the results can be proven far beyond a reasonable doubt. The leaked presentation read in Italian, though it cautioned that the analysis of a statistical nature and as such, any result has a confidence level associated with it. So there you go. That's chain analysis. But I think we already read about chain analysis saying, uh, I can't remember when that happened. That happened last year, right? I think it was last year. Anyways, if these analysis firms aren't working on anonymity enhanced coins, then they're not doing their jobs, Green says. And he says, I think we should assume that they are looking at these systems and they're probably having some success. The unspoken message to Liechtensteins and Morgans of the world, even if you wrap videos and sloppy cloud storage accounts don't get you caught, your clever laundering tricks may still not save you from the ever-evolving sophistication of law enforcement crypto tracers. Dun, dun, dun. All right. Moral of the story, don't steal crypto from a KYC exchange because that's crazy. I don't think this was a KYC exchange, but you know what I mean at the time. Whatever. They did use something with KYC that probably was linked to that cloud account in some way, I assume. Uh, but it does look like, of course, there are chain analysis saying that there's a couple, uh, couple different companies working on cracking and tracking and tracing privacy coins. So there's that. I hope you enjoyed this clip from the Crypto Mining Morning Show every Monday through Friday, 7.45 a.m. Pacific and 10.45 a.m. Eastern Time. You can check out more clips here, or if you're interested in checking out the entire live show, you can check that out down here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday.